Chapter 11 of A Copper Harvest by a Self-Made Man. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 11. His name was Mean Fun. The sun was just rising above the distant horizon next morning when Jack woke up, pushed open the folds of the canvas of the tent, occupied by himself and Charlie Fox, and looked out. He saw a figure poking around the cook stove under the awning erected to protect the cooking department from the weather and his first idea was that it was Meyer preparing an early breakfast. A second glance, however, assured him it was altogether a different sort of person from the fat German boy. It was, in fact, a gaunt, sad-eyed Chinaman. But gee, he exclaimed, it's a chink. He'll be stealing some of our things if I don't head him off. He pulled on his garments and dashed into the open. Hello there, he shouted. What are you doing there? The Chinaman turned around slowly and grinned a ghastly sort of grin. Me hungry. Ali same starvy. Fasty heap for day. Fastly all gone. His look certainly bore out his statement, and Jack felt sorry for him at once. Where'd you come from, John? San Francisco. So far as that, eh? The heathen nodded solemnly and then rubbed his stomach. All right, said Jack. I'll get you something to eat. The boy found some remains of the fish they had had the evening previous, also a chunk of bread. He handed them over to the Chinaman, and the fellow made short work of them. Feely Betty now, he said with a cheerful grin on his sallow countenance. Tasted good, did it? Betty Lifey. You want to hile? Work it cheap. At this juncture, Gideon Prawl issued from his tent, followed by Meyer. Shimini Christmas, ejaculated Inkelspiel, as soon as his gaze rested on the Mongolian. What you calls dot fellers? Oh, yeah, he is a Shinyman, ain't ye? "'Where did you spring from, Chink?' asked Prawl, surveying the new arrival curiously. "'No, Springy. Walky long way. No lighty on railroad. Cause he why? No goody scads. Bouncy quicky, no pay.' "'Well, I guess yes. Looks half-starved, don't he?' to Jack. "'Say, you ought to have seen him eat what we had left over. Wants a job.' "'What can you do, Chink?' "'Most anything. But no colly Chink. Namey mean fun.' Oh, your name is Mean Fun, eh? Collect, grinned the moon-eyed one. Where did you work last? San Francisco. What did you do? Wash clothes? No, washy. For company bring from China. Can't you place in Chinese banky on the Duponti sleet? Worky up nicey fat job. Ali same president. What's that? asked Prowl. President of the Chinese bank? In some amazement. Sure, puppy, grinned the celestial. Me starty out on hooky. Givey booky, givey cashy, pay interest, sabe? He must be a peach, remarked Jack. More oh, like a big liar, grunted Pro. They all are. He fine banky, fine safey. He big sign. Plenty Chinaman depositors come first off. One he say, Mr. Banky President, me catchy some money washy washy. Maybe three hundred dollar. You keepy him for me. I tell him, sure, Mikey, put ye in safey, pay interest. The dickens you say, gasped Prawl. Another cummy, he say, me when he's seventy dollar, catchy booty and gooty. Mickey, he fine cigarettes, you keepy? Ali light, me say, and sucky wad and safey. Plenty scads come in he, more than steen hundred dollar. Me livey high, eaty roast beef, macaroni. Fly rice, last belly pudding. All sudden, Chinamen all come in and want booty back. Want buy bootly diggy, some other foodly dinky. Me looky in safe, county scads. Tell he, come back at Tamala, poor glacky. Giddy wad then. When all go, me pull thee down blind, pecky clip, booty in boodle, skippy out fill's train. Go Sacramento, change ye namey, giddy dunk, blow ye in wad, daisy old nicky. In morning me finding me busted. Walky le road tie. Bime be giddy lost. Oh, starvy. Now me ready to walk. Cookie, washy, iron, anything. Suffer and Jews harps. If you ain't the biggest liar I ever met, and I've seen some good one in my time, you may throw me into the creek, said Prawl in a tone of disgust. No, lie. Tell the truth. All the same, me American man. Are you willing to wheel a barrow? asked Prawl, pointing to one of those useful instruments. Sure, Dingy. Me wheelie battle. All right. I'll see how long you last. 
Me lasty all e night. So mean fun was admitted to the companionship of the party, and after breakfast was put to work helping to take the rest of the things from the flatboat. When at length Prawl, Jack, and Charlie entered the mine, leaving Meyer to watch on the outside, they took mean fun with them. Several lanterns were suspended at various points within the old deserted copper mine, and their bright glow furnished sufficient illumination for digging and other purposes connected with the mining operations. Then the boys, under the experienced direction of Gideon Prawl, got busy, and it was not very long before Mean Fawn made his appearance on the outside with his first load. It was Meyer's duty to separate the copper ore from the loose dirt and pitch the former into the bottom of the boat. "'This was a skinch!' mused the German boy when he started in to make himself useful. But by and by, when the novelty of the work began to wear off and the heat of the sun commenced to get in his work, Dinkelspiel began to entertain quite a different opinion of the job. "'My shimminy! I believe this was harder than workings their pestles and their mortars for the old fox. Every time I finish up a pile that shinnyman brings out another load. Wouldn't it make you weeps to think of it?' But there was no let up for Meyer till it was time for him to set about preparing the noonday meal. Nothing shall be left of me but a grease spot, by the dime dot old pot had filled up. When Mean Fun observed Meyer beginning his culinary operations, he dropped the barrow and offered to assist. Nein, objected Dinkelspiel. Go by your business about quick. I and myself under chief cook on bottle washers. Me making nicey lassie belly puddings, you catchy bellies. "'Off you don't chase yourself all pretty quick. I will fall on you. And then you will be have to be swept up.' So Mean Fun had to return to his wheelbarrow. "'We've done pretty well for a beginning, haven't we, Mr. Prawl?' asked Jack when they knocked off work about noon. "'Certain you have. Rather close in that hole. You must try to dig an outlet through the roof. "'What are we going to do about the big mass of ore in the corner?' asked Charlie. "'Shatter with small charges of dynamite.' Those small cases I have you move ashore so carefully and put yonder under that canvas covering. That's explosive. Then all hands sat down to dinner. End of chapter 11